Hi, I'm the Morelander and this is Morelander EDC. Now, we're here today to look at the Tasmanian Tiger Survival Pack. I made a piece of content a few weeks back where I looked at five of the toughest 20 litres or less backpacks that are out there, uh, and this was on the list, so I'll leave a link to, you know, wherever that is. Uh, but I wanted to get back to this because I think it deserves a little bit more time, and I can tell from the comments that you guys really wanted to see more from this. So, here we have hanging perfectly, the Tasmanian Tiger Survival Pack. Now, I got my hands on this. This year, actually, it was in March, IWA, and I nicknamed this the Frankenstein bag because it's the bag that shouldn't work, but does work. I think what Tasmanian Tiger and the designers there have done is took features from several different other bags mashed them together into this Frankenstein bag and it just works on so many levels, it really does. For a 16 litre pack, I think this is possibly one of the most versatile packs that I've ever been able to test out or touch or get my hands on. Now I'll say this was sent to me by Tasmanian Tiger, I'm one of their UK ambassadors, um, but um, with the great relationship that I have with them, I, I, I you know, I'm perfectly willing to tell you the truth and you know there's there's no sort of I've been paid to uh, review this fairly um, okay so the pack itself dimensions wise this is a 16 litre pack now you think 16 litres you certainly don't think that you can get a lot in there but I will say that it's phenomenal the amount that you can put in here it's it's a very kind of TARDIS I guess if you're British you'll understand the reference if you're not and you like Doctor Who, then you probably will understand the reference anyway, but it, it, it's, it's crazy the amount that you can fit into here. As far as the construction as this is concerned, it's made from 700D Cordura, genuine Cordura, there is a label on it here on the back. Um, which is a great denier because you get the, the toughness that you get with 1000D, but you also get the lightness that you'll get from 500D. It's a very good weight that bridges uh, and has both of the um, good properties from, from, from each of those. It's available in several different colours. The colour that I have here, this is the Coyote version, there's also black. I believe there's a grey version which is actually really nice. Um, and then all of your ODs and all, all your different ones. And there was also an IRR version as well, just in case you are needed to do something that you need those properties on here. Um, zips are all YKK zips, all of the buckles are Wujin buckles on here. There's no metals apart from here on the front we do have some G-hooks which I'll get back to a little bit later on, on, on how they work. So as we usually do, we'll go around the pack, we'll have a look at the suspension system and then we'll have a look at all of the sexy things on the inside. So the front of the pack, it is scaled back as far as what you'd expect from a military style backpack so you're not going to get your pals webbing or your molly on here however that doesn't mean that this isn't um, able to do some of the things that you can do with that so working from the actually working from the bottom here so underneath here there is a built-in uh, rain hood I'm going to fold this out purposely to make sure you can see this. So, rain hood, if you need to be found, if you need to be seen, um, then you have got this high vis on the rain hood. Um, I think with the name of the survival pack, this is designed purposely so that if you are out in the woods and you need to be found, it certainly makes you easier to be found. However, if you're using this for other, let's say, things that you don't want to be seen, this is perfectly um, reversible and you can't see the orange through there, which I think is quite a nice feature. But if you're out in the pinch and you're in the rain, then you can just quickly pull this out uh, and it will fit over your pack. It is removable if you wanted to. There's there's a small little plastic hook at the end of this tether on here. Uh, so again, you know, should you want to, if you wanted to reduce some weight. Now I'll say weight-wise, this isn't a particularly heavy pack. It comes in about uh, one and a third kilos. Um, but yeah, it's not heavy. But if you wanted to, maybe you could put something additional in there. Um, again, should you need to. Hook and loop sections, you have a hook and loop section here at the bottom and then there is a larger morale section at the top and then we have some extra zips. So these are nice shallow pockets so they're only about say maybe 
two, maybe three inches deep. Uh, but if you need to put stuff in there to get quick access to it, here and there I've got some poo bags because, you know, I'm a dog walker. Uh, but really nice large zips, so on these, are they size 10s? They better be, they look huge. Uh, I can't turn it round enough, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it out there. I think this is, these are size 10s, but these are the YKK RC zips that are just butter smooth. Now underneath this flap, I did mention these G-hooks, so underneath here you have some hook and loop to, to keep this flap down, and then you have two G-hooks here. So if you have um, Molle packs that have loops at the top of them, this is what you can put through here. I do have one of the Tasmanian Tiger 8.1 waste packs on the way to me and this fits perfectly on so what you have to do is use the G hooks at the top so that you can you can keep it on there stop it from falling off the front and then you just use the waistband to put it round there and it, it, it just sits perfectly to add additional modularity depending on whether you wanted to attach something to the front you have some daisy chaining that goes down the side so if you have a bungee system which you do get with this I'll show you it's on the inside in a second but you can lace your bungee through here so that you can put additional storage on the front let's say which I do have just off camera I have one I have a, a small jacket on here you could put that in there and yeah you know you just be rocking out Larger section at the top and the daisy chaining does go all the way up. Sorry, I, I, I just pointed at this bottom section But it does go all the way up so that you can fit more in uh, You have the morale patch section a small Tasmanian Tiger logo here and then behind this Another pocket which I just happen to have my gloves in easy access But this is one of the things that I really like about this top pack and I'm going to take it out from here for a second so in this pocket You'll be able to see that there is another grab handle. So the grab and the pocket will still close with the grab handle out. So you have that one here, and then you also have one on the back. So if you wanted to carry this like a tote pouch, tote bag kind of thing, if you want to take this into the office, if you're running around, you need to grab it. If you're lying this flat in the back of your truck or something like that. These are brilliant. You just grab hold of them, you pull them out, you go on and, and you're off walking. Now, I haven't had chance yet to travel with this. I have a few business trips set up by the end of this year and I am 100% gonna travel with this just to see how useful these are. Now, I know already how useful they're gonna be, but I just wanna test it out just to make sure. Now, put that back on there, where were we? So, but if you don't want to use that, then you can fold it in and then it just fits away perfect. On the top, you have uh, some extra uh, elastic on here. So if you wanted to put some chem lights, if you wanted to attach anything to here, you can do. Now, it didn't go back to the bottom, so I apologize about that. The bottom is completely flat. There's no sort of lashing points on here, apart from here on the side. So these have been used as reinforcements for the zips, but they've also been pulled out ever so slightly. So if you did want to attach something to the bottom, you could run something through here and have something stored there as well. Now before I get onto the inside, I thought I'd just show you the sides. So on either side, there's one on the left and there's one on the right as well. You have these grab handles, which are great. Again, if you wanted to carry this like a briefcase or something like that, then you can do because the straps are completely removable. So on this side, now I would say, if there's anything that I was gonna change about this, I think this is the least elegant part. So what you have is you have a loop in one end that passes through and then you then pass it through that loop to be able to pull on that. I was just trying to think if there was a better way to do this and I think that there is and I think it's going back to using these G-hooks. If they'd put G-hooks on the end of these and then had um, this on there then I think that would be a better option. And that's not to say that you can't do that because you could just easily take these off with some, uh, with some pliers, pull them off and then you could thread some G-hooks through these. I really do want to see a version of this. I hope this isn't just an experiment that TT are doing just to see, well, let's try this Frankenstein pack, let's see how well it does. I want to see future iterations of this because I want to see this one pack grow and then take feedback on how to, you know, finesse bits. For me, because they've already got metal hardware on here, it can't be a magnetic kind of, oh, we want this to go through security easier. They've already got metal on here, so replacing these with, with metal hardware, I think would be great. Uh, but yes, so you can completely take this off, 
Then there is a pocket on the back here as well. Now you can pass those through into there and then they'll slip in there. Now, I think that's great, mainly for these side options, mainly for that kind of tote bag feel to the top. The straps on these are brilliant. I will never say anything bad about TT straps, other than maybe something that would possibly change here at the bottom. Uh, TT do straps very well. Um, these aren't particularly highly padded straps, but I think for a 16 litre pack, they probably could have just over designed them. I think for a 16 litre pack, they are just about right. You have this really nice mesh on the inside. As far as the back panel is concerned, we're not talking about a lot of airflow on this. Um, it, it is just the straight Cordura on the back, but you do have two strips of padding either side to allow a little bit of air through there. You have an adjustable and removable sternum strap, should you want to take that off. I'm fiddling with this now because I'm not looking at it. And then as we go down here, you then also have, which I think is a great feature that TT put on the vast majority of the packs, you have quick release buckles on there. Now these are silent quick release buckles, buckles, buckles um, because you can pull this elastic down over them and then when they snap shut, you, you just can't hear it. That's probably because I didn't do it properly. Let's try it again. There you go. Um, it, it also stops a lot of that clinking. If you've got a belt or something that you're worried about that, then yeah, it's great, but really nice options. Now, let's get onto the inside, because I'm sure this is the bit they've actually been waiting over the last 14 minutes to actually see. So, on the inside, two large zips. Again, um, YKK size 10 zips. These are brilliant. Uh, and you have that uh, shrink um, wrap on them, so you can pull these down. And this is a full clamshell opening, which is great. Yeah, there's not a lot of TT packs. Maybe the Mission Pack? Mission Pack does. Uh, the Modular Series packs do. Uh, but some of the smaller packs, the, the smaller date modular day and the Essential Pack, they don't fully clamshell open, so it's great that this is on here. All of the stitching on the inside, nice and reinforced. You've got some um, additional lining here as well, which is that bottom section where uh, the uh, the rain cover is but on the inside you have all of these little pouches so if you're the type of person that loves keeping every there's a place for everything and everything has a place my granddad always used to say if you're that person you're gonna go nuts for this so what we have is um, how what size are these so there is a six liter there is a larger six liter there are three smaller two and a half liters and then there are these uh, smaller half Half liter pouches. Each of them has a hook and loop section. So if you wanted to name these, maybe you're into photography, you want to have some SD cards, you want to have some cables, you want to have some cleaning equipment, maybe if you're into survival and you want to have your uh, fire starting kit, you want to have some uh, change of clothing, you want to have some, uh, I don't know, extra rope for lashing things, you can name all of these. The top two and a half litre pack that we have, or two and a half litre pouch that we have here, has an another, an additional uh, little signalling section. You can either attach this to the pack, there's plenty of little lashing points, especially with the daisy chain on there, that you can attach this. Or if you are, say, making a camp, if you want to be seen by somebody, or at least want to be found, as this is a survival pack, you can use this. Um, these are all standard and come with the, pa with the actual pack itself. Um, all have these really nice YKK RC zips on there and they all have this uh, see-through mesh on the front as well. So if there is something that you want to find, then it's a lot easier to find it. The ones on the back, now I am call I'm calling this the back mainly because this is the section of the pack that is uh, against your back. So these two larger, the, you have the two and a half and you have the six litre pack there, or pouch, sorry. These are attached to the, the, the frame, these are attached to the backpack itself. But you get additional modularity when it comes to the, um, this, the, the front section that opens out. And that is because the two, two and a half litre 
ones on here are completely removable. So you have hook and loop on the back of each of these, but they're essentially the same. So the, the, the larger six litre one that we just looked at, these are two and a half litre versions. So again, if it is that you're maybe traveling, you want to use one of these for toiletries, um, you want to use one of these for cables because you're going to see a client to do something, or if you are traveling and you just say, right, okay, let's go out, let's see the city, let's see what we've got, you can take those out to help to reduce some of the weight and maybe put some more things in here as well. Now I did mention the bungee system. So in these, to the, the two half litre version, two half litre little pouches that you have here, it does come with uh, a, a, a bungee, um, a section of bungee rope, so that you can you can add that to the front. But you can also add it on the inside as well. So to add again just to modularity through the inside here although this is upside down you have some laser cut pals webbing you have five rows and so five columns and a dozen rows of it so you can attach anything to this although this isn't designed for CCW if you wanted to CCW this you certainly could do you can swing it round to your side have the zips orientated so that you can open it and get quick access in there and then you have more internal daisy chaining so that if you wanted to strap something to the inside of this now it's not designed as such to have a laptop in here however i have been to work a few times i've had my 16 inch laptop in here and it's fit perfectly what i did was is i had that daisy chaining and i had the bungee on there slid the laptop into that and it just kept it in place now it's not Oh, well, actually, I was going to say it's not got your raised bottom, but underneath here you have that uh, rain hood, which is great because it, it, it does cushion it at the bottom. It's not really designed to do that, but it, it does. I just got back and completely realised whilst editing there was a section that I'd forgotten about. So where you have these pouches here at the back, there is hook and loop. Uh, for a section that you can put a hydration bladder in here and there is also a fixation point and plus here is where your hydration bladder can come out and then go across your straps should you need to. Now as far as getting it on is concerned done it done at the sternum strap didn't I? Like a div. It just fits like you'd expect from any sort of backpack I like to keep my sternum strap on there. I like sternum straps. Some people don't, some people do. I'm a sternum strap kind of guy. It just, you know, it's a, it's a 16 litre pack that fits exactly as you'd expect from a 16 litre pack. I've done, uh, I've done quite a few walks with this now. I've I took this into the office and commuted with this a few days. Um, I've, I went into town the other weekend to get some groceries and some meat from the butchers and just chucked it in here I didn't have those extra pouches in and it, it, it all just fit a 16 litre bag should not be overlooked because we look especially at EDC we look at say 20 to 30 litre backpacks and that's that kind of sweet spot but for a 16 litre bag one it's surprising how much you can fit in here and two the versatility as I mentioned at the beginning of this I've never tested a pack that is as versatile as this apart from the slight change down here which is a which is a tiny change I think this is a great bag what I'd like to see is maybe if they did a 25 litre version as well just to see what the extra capacity could do but for, again not taking anything away from this for a 16 litre bag the Tasmanian Tiger survival pack is an excellent bag so there's me waffling. I've probably waffled quite a bit there. Hope you enjoyed today's piece of content. I know off the back of the bit that I did a few weeks ago, uh, top five um, toughest packs that are 20 litres or less. I'll leave a link wherever that goes. Um, it was one that you'd asked a lot about. So when people ask, you know, I, I try to give as quickly as possible. That sounded weird. Uh, anyway, so moving on quickly. Huge thank you to Tasmanian Tiger, especially Tasmanian Tiger UK for sending this my way. Um, Ian, yeah, you're a goddamn legend. I will leave all of their links below so that you can see more from them. I'll leave some of my social media links below as well. But for now, as always, stay safe, stay Moorlander and stay EDC.
not the brown, sorry, I've forgotten the colour of this, I've forgotten the name of it, but this is that colour. I'm gonna have to do that bit again. <sighs> what colour is it? I forgot what colour it is. Coyote, you absolute knobrot. Today we are here today to today. I said today five, did I say? I said, I think I said it. Anyway, let's start that again. It's chilling. Hi, I'm the Moorlander and this is, it is actually quite warm. Let's take this off. Have a helper just off camera. It's a tree, but it's class as a helper. I've got to put everything back in it now. It wasn't much. Gloves, pouches. <sighs> Still got that cold. But I refuse, I refuse to call it man flu. I will, although, although I just uttered those words then, I think it's, I think it's wrong that any sort of anyone's sexuality, not sexuality, anybody's sex should be used in a negative way. So I refuse to call it man flu. Just got a cold. Anyway, where were we? I need to take some photos. Right, have a nice Sunday. See you soon.